What up, guys? CP the Tool Addict. Woo! We have a pretty good video today that I want to have a discussion. We'll call this one the Sunday Sermon. Yes, Sonny? The Sunday Sermon. Uh, as you can hear, my dog in the background, she is very happy to do this video. But anyways, we're going to find out who's scamming us the worst. Is it, is it Amazon? Is it Snap-on? Is it Harbor Freight? What companies are really duping us? And what should we do about it? Let's get into the video. I feel like we're going to have some good comments in the comment section after this. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. So let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into this video because this is a doozy. The other day, I was talking to my good buddy, Dave. Um, he's got a YouTube channel, Quick Wrench 75 And he was asking me for about a valve keeper remover installation tool. More specifically, the Lyle one, the 36050. And by just an absolute dumb mistake that I made. I typed in 36050. And what do you think I found? It landed me on not one, not two, but three different tools with the same part number, but not the same manufacturer, and for a $20 cheaper price tag. And it got me to thinking, you know, I've been meaning to do this video for a while, and I'm sure there's a lot of you that are aware of this going on. But Amazon has become very overwhelmingly terrible about allowing this to go on on the website. First of all, if you just were to Google the part number, which a lot of times I will Google a part number, it definitely can lead you down the same trap where you would think you were pulling up the Lyle tool, but you also get these other tools. Now, a lot of you might say, well, CP, they look very similar. Like, what would be the, the problem with getting them? Well, there isn't much of a problem other than the fact is you're not going to get a warranty for that $20 less versus Lyle that's going to give you a warranty. And it's a lot better, higher-graded tool. You can see here by the reviews, this one's only got 42. This one's only got one. And this one has 27 at 3.8. Now, well, some of you are going to say, yeah, there's a good chance that this thing is a pile of garbage. But it's, it's not just this one part number. It is multiple. And I just realized, you know, that I, I've, I've been meaning to make this video for a long time. And quite frankly, you know that I use Amazon uh, affiliate links. And they, I'll tell you, a lot of people have discrepancies about people using Amazon affiliate links. But there's really a need in this world now for guys like me that are looking for this stuff and watching out for you guys. And that's exactly why I do this. And using that Amazon affiliate link is such a good resource for you to use because it keeps you from getting jumped onto something like that. If you were to just type in that part number and then you order the wrong one, you know, you're not going to be very happy with your purchase, I don't believe. Thus leading you to be upset with either me or, you know, Lyle eventually. And it's really not their fault. It's Amazon's. And it just further drives home the thing that we have to be more diligent and we have to start holding these people accountable because this is ridiculous. This, I mean, just three different tools that look the same, but why is Amazon allowing them to use that part number? There should be a law against that where they have to come up with their own part number if they're going to run a tool. I mean, these Chinese knockoffs, they should have to have a different part number. This is obviously a blatant trap to try to get you to buy their tool using Lyle's part number. And however, I found, you know, just doing some, I mean, we're talking very minor and quick research that this isn't the only thing. Lyle's new creeper seat is already being knocked off. And you can see right here, the dimensions on this are 17 by 14 by 14. This, two, this seat is $100 and Lyle's new creeper, Jeepers creeper seat is 119 Now I can tell you, you can see by the picture, you should notice the dimensions on this are 14 by 14 on the base. This one is 17 by 17 by 17, which means that you're going to get a much stabler unit, not to mention the fact that they're using, obviously you can see the screws are different. They're probably using machine screws versus heavy duty industrial screws. And it's just, you're getting ripped off. Do you really want to pay $20 less? And look at the seat on this thing. 
I mean, what is that? That looks like a couch cushion. They try to church it up with putting a little cup holder on it and whatnot, but they a freaky fit? Like, come on. These kinds of things, and I and I really hope I didn't have to do something like this, and I hope a lot of you did understand that this is uh, good, but this creeper seat just came out. It's already got 4.7 and 13 reviews. I can only imagine, now I should have went in to look to the reviews, but I guarantee you they're all people that were either part of that company or somebody that they paid, because there's no way that there's 13 reviews on that and people saying that it's a great seat. When the Dials Jeepers Creeper seat came out and there's no reviews on it, once again, you got to watch out. Now, do I hate Amazon? I have a love-hate relationship. Let's just put it to you this way. And it's not just Amazon. And some people will say they're Snap-on. And I've said forever, Harbor Freight, marketing, guys. You know what the, the problem is? There is somebody, there's a group of people sitting somewhere right now. And I'm talking right now, whatever day it is, seven days a week, there's a group of people somewhere right now that is sitting in an office or a meeting room, and they're discussing how they can bamboozle customers by using mind games, trickery, to get you to buy their products. I mean, it even goes so far as Facebook Marketplace. Look at this truck. Well taken care of. This guy was asking 4K for it. I mean, <laughs> taking, care of what, taking care of well for the... Look at it. I mean, people will try to say anything to sell their garb. Mobile Tool Network. Where's this company at now? This is a company that came out and said, oh, we'll be around for years. They came out in the business. They're out of business. And the people that are associated with them are just as disgusting as a company that does something like that to their, to their distributors, to the customers. It's a middleman we don't need. And I'll tell you what, I, I don't want to make this video sound like I'm trying to be negative because this is all about supporting my fellow American. This is all about giving information out to people so that they can understand that these companies have to go. We, You know what the sad part about it is, is what really bothers me, is that we used to be honest, more honest. A $2,500 Chevy truck pulling a plane in 1972, a $100,000 Tesla Cybertruck towing a rocket. I mean, it just, just all this marketing crap. Look at the difference, which there's a little caveat into this. Because if you look at the fact that they're pulling a plane with a pickup, big deal. But it was kind of interesting and it was catchy. But they've taken it to the next extreme of, of marketing people with really flashy garbage. And we've also seen companies building tools. And I, I, want, I don't want to put any, I want to put everybody out there on blast. But I mean, Mac Tools, Stanley Black & Decker having the same wrench under, building it under six different brands. Grip Edge Tools, whatever whatever their company name is, the fact that they're changing names for different stuff is a marketing ploy. They sell the company, they sell it to RBRT as Mac, and then because they can't sell RBRT and market it anywhere else because they have an exclusion, exclusive agreement, they switch the name. These dog and pony show circus act companies have got to go. The dishonesty is absolutely ridiculous. The fact that they are basically laughing and mocking at the American citizens saying that they aren't smart enough to realize that these tools are being built under the same roof, but switching names? Come on, guys. Like, enough is enough. Stop supporting these people. We need to all stop supporting them. I am just absolutely tired of it, of listening to these companies make lie after lie. You know how much how I would how much more I would respect the company and please leave a comment down in the comment box. If a company came out told the truth, showed the manufacturing and was 100% upfront and honest. How awesome would that be? And you know why they don't? A lot of it has to do with the fact of ripping off each other, but they're just all a bunch of thieves and sneak thieves. I just found out that this ratchet which Cornwell had an exclusive deal on uh, K-Tool is making this ratchet now and selling it after the ISN show. This is their, if you remember, the Cornwall came out with their 700 foot-pound half-inch drive two-piece ratchet. Boom, there it is. Once again, Cornwall didn't disclose that. See, I'm throwing everybody out there. I want to put everybody out there on blast. The lies. I mean, it's just, it's just getting old. Super Scraper. The original carbide scraper has been knocked off by every manufacturer including snap-on now these were made here in iowa originally and the one to the right far right is a maco but it's also a uh lyle has gotten it now 
which Lyle shortened it up, and they improved on it. That I don't mind so much. So well, let's talk about that. And I know I'm I'm gonna I'm biased to Lyle, obviously, but I believe in Lyle tools. And something else I want to address too. Somebody made a comment in the, my last recent video about Lyle, about why Lyle doesn't put their name and part numbers and such on their tools. And I thought that was a good comment, and I wanted to address stuff like that. The flashiness, okay? Lyle Tools has always had the philosophy to make the tools the best they can and make them for the cheapest price, and they haven't steered away from that in 124 years. That's what makes them a standout company in the business. And I think that's the direction we need to all, and I do feel like a lot of people are supporting Lyle. And I hope you all realize that that is really, with the economy that we're in and the way people are needing to save money, Lyle is really standing out and shining throughout the time right now. And that's why. Even the Super Scraper, even though it's made in the USA, they're putting their name on there, all that stuff. It's not really necessary. Yeah, I know, guy wants to know where he got it from and all this and that, but that little, those little words cost you money. Every letter on that cost you money. And let's be frank, most tool companies know what tool there is theirs and where it was made at. So you don't always need all the flashiness, the bot, the packaging. All that stuff is just cost, overhead cost to the consumer. We're essentially digging ourselves in a hole with a lot of tools these days and a lot of products period this is really goes i could go deeper into this with the economy with building trucks the fact that gm is building trucks and they're selling them for a hundred thousand dollars and they only have 40 percent cost into them i mean wow sixty thousand dollar profit there's a lot of people with their hands in the cookie jar that are getting money for stuff and it's just unnecessary they could be worried about they could be more concerned about getting helping the american we're not helping each other out that's the that's the whole point of this video once again snap on recently that i disclosed about which this has been going on for years building tools for cat that are at half the cost but they're not out to the general public and they're not easy to obtain and i think a lot of people have found out after i did that video that even obtaining cat tools that are snap on you have problems getting warranties obviously buying them you're going to go through a little bit of a different deal versus having a dealer that's coming to your shop every day then we have the good old harbor freight knocking off snap-on once again i said this a million times identity okay building your own brand identity you could have had the opportunity to make a tool that was literally different unique and just to your specs and still make a good tool as good as the snap-on but instead we're knocking off the brand to make ourselves to make customers feel like they're getting a professional grade tool. It's just it's just insane to me how crazy this is getting. I don't know if it'll stop, but I feel like this video could help out a few people. And listen, if I've changed five people's minds or opened their eyes to it, then I'm I'm a happy camper. Long story short, surround yourself with people who fight for you. When you are in the room, when you are in rooms, you aren't in. That's what the basis of this video is, is that we need to start sticking up for each other. And honestly, when you guys aren't, what you guys don't see when I'm not on video or doing channels, you have no idea how much I am fighting for every American out there and how much that I just am sick of seeing people that are... They don't have the time to do the research. They don't have time to see it. And they get bamboozled by these stupid little oversights. It's just insane to me. And Americans are getting ripped off by an alarming rate. You know, $10 adds up. You waste $10 of your money, okay, and you do that several times a year. Boom, you got $100. That's a tank of gas. You know, I mean, things like that are just what really can sink people fast. And some people will say, oh, $100 ain't nothing. I'll tell you what, though. I know people to $100, that's a lot of money. It's better to be full of whiskey than full of shit. These companies need to be more honest and transparent and let, comp let their customers know the facts about everything. We need to stop supporting companies and salesmen, dirty snake oil salesmen. You know, I, I watch these guys, these tool truck guys that are uh, trying to sell on the internet now and they're just... They're, they're insufferable, honestly. They're pushing their products, and they're while well, they're trying to push products, they're a middleman, okay? 
why do you need to buy why do you need to pay somebody else to sell you a tool sometimes that's just really the whole negative part about the industry that i really don't like so anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video definitely leave me your comments concerns questions in the bottom down there don't forget to ring that bell remember keep your hands dirty and your money clean thanks for watching